Hey you guys, welcome back to the channel where we review anything and everything. And today I'm just doing a overlook or a preview video of what's to come with this particular Lego set here in front of us. This is a Lego set from the Zelda line, the Great Deku Tree, two in one. Now it's up for pre-order. It's new. It's exclusive. It probably won't be around for very long. Uh, it says right here, as you can see, September 1st is when the item starts to ship. Now, a lot of people have put their input on this, saying that it's too expensive. Um, I don't disagree with the fact that it feels that way, even though on a piece to price to piece count, it is somewhat reasonable. If you were to say, for example, um, a thousand four hundred piece set, like say the Ghost, the Star Wars Ghost Ship, um, at 1,400 pieces. It's 1,300, like 94. We're just going to say 1,400 pieces. Um, at $160, if you double that for a piece count of 2,800, you'd be looking at $320. So $20 more for an additional 300 pieces which is somewhat about right of what that goes for. So, um, you know, by that logic and that standpoint, it would seem like it's not too far off from, you know, reasonable price. But with that being said, a lot of people still do feel that it's too much that you're, that you're spending on the set. And some people have argued also that, well, there's a lot of parts that might get left over because it's a two in one set. And so essentially for those who are unfamiliar with it now, even though I know a lot of people have been kind of reviewing this already or previewing this already, um, I should say it's a two in one set. So it means you have the, uh, Deku tree from both or Ocarina of time and you have it from, I'm not too, let me see. Is it the breath of the wild? Uh, I believe it's breath of the wild, but I'm not really too familiar with, um the other let me see if they have it on here i know that i've seen it before i want to say this a breath of a while but i don't want to get it wrong uh in saying that and of course i don't see the other option on here in regards to that so let me see if um i can back out of this let's see if i can uh see anything else on it saying that no there's nothing on here saying that i know that i've seen other box cover material on it I'm, i don't know why i'm not able to bring it up here but i believe it is the ocarina of time and it is the breath of the wild i'm just gonna go with that uh, you guys can correct me if I'm wrong inside the comments. I believe that that's what it is. I'm familiar with the Ocarina of Time because uh, that was kind of when I grew up. We had that for Nintendo 64. So let me just dive into my thoughts when it comes to this set here. So <clears throat> I actually like the set a lot. Um, if I was to, if, if I, if it was something that I was to purchase, which I don't think I'm going to, but if it was something that I was to purchase, I would definitely be looking at the Ocarina of Time setup because this one also comes with a little, uh, links, little house build on the side. Uh, let me see. We got an image of that on here. There we go. Um, which, you know, for those who are familiar with that game, he had his little house there on the side and in addition to uh, obviously the Deku tree in that same area where his house was. So I think that's a nice little build that they added to that. Um, you also get the uh, little sprite as well. So I think that's pretty cool. And that would be the one I put it on. In general, though, I would say when it comes to this set, um, it was my thoughts when I saw this released in terms of if, say, if they're going to build more onto the, uh, onto the set as a series as a whole more zelda um builds i think that they should have started with a probably a 
twenty dollar, twenty or thirty dollar sub packs, maybe three of them, and they would have one for Ocarina of Time Link. They would have, and it'd just be just Link, maybe with his house, just so like how you see the little the build there with the house, something like that, and then with the young version and the old version have a wind waker one for those who are familiar with that same thing thirty dollars maybe to come with a little small boat not too big but you know later on it'll be expandable to have a bigger boat but he'll come with like a little small boat which represent almost like his little home for those who are familiar with the wind waker he was pretty much like a pirate on the sea and then have one for the breath of the wild which i'm not really too familiar with but, you know, I don't know if there was anything he if he had a little a home of his own or any other kind of significant thing in that one. But my point to that is. Um, oh, here we go. Breath of the Wild uh, it says it right there. Um, but. My point to. Uh, I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought for a little second. What I was getting at was that for uh, Breath of the Wild version, I don't know if he had like a little home. I'm not too familiar with the series, but you get the point. Each three would have like 20 or 30 dollars set. Maybe it needs to be thirty dollars to have you know enough to kind of fit everything in there. Give Link his little home. Give an adult version and a young version if that you know version required that, like Ocarina of Time. Um, obviously, Wind Waker, you wouldn't need that. Maybe have a little guest appearance of someone else with him in that one, um, whoever it might be. Maybe it's uh, Tetra comes along with him in that one. But little sets like that, and then those would be the primary ones that you start with. And then I would make also a. Um, uh, a set or a figure pack of those same three lines, just the figures without the homes, if you just wanted to get the figures. But if you want them with their homes, because you just want to focus on a particular one, like say Ocarina of Time, it would just be, you know, Link with his home set and it would be like $30. And then from there, I would make it that you buy sets that go along with each version's, you know, game storyline. So obviously, uh, you would have uh, the Deku tree. I'm, I'm assuming like, say, if they didn't build this one like this, and I'm just saying an alternative, alternative way they could have done this. You would buy the Deku tree, uh, the Deku tree, I'm sorry. You would buy certain uh, locations, since I'm familiar with that game. I'll say you might get the the sand area where you have like the little sand tribe of people there, the, the thieves. Um, you would have, um, what's the name of that town again? Karakul village or something? I, I forget the name of it. I'm sorry. The, there's a little village inside there. Um, you would have that. Uh, excuse me for not remembering. It's been a long time. You would have where the Sea Temple is, where you have the Zora people. You could have that as its own separate set. You could have these really nice sets that people can expand on and, and really build up those areas to where eventually you could have a full map at some point in time. And the sets wouldn't have to be too pricey because maybe some of them would have a lot of different aspects that go into them. You know, maybe uh, um, when you're building, say, Hyrule, you know, village area, Hyrule, like the castle area, we have the market and everything. Maybe you have a, a separate area for some parts of the market. Then you have the castle as one nice big build and whatnot, and you kind of build it up. So I think that's the route that they should have gone. As is, I think that the set is pricey for the audience that's going to really want this and i think that you're going to have some people who could be young some people could be older that could really be into it and um you know the breath of the wild is going to definitely cater to a lot of the younger generation who they grew up with that because that's fairly new ocarina of time is going to probably cater to the people older generation but nonetheless 300 dollars is still a lot to say if i want to get a Zelda based product, I have to dive into a $300 set, I think really is just a lot. So with that being said, you guys, um, that's my thoughts on it. Do I think that it's something that's worth purchasing? I mean, if they're just going to give you this and nothing else, and they're never going to expand on it, then I mean, you could take it or leave it. it. It runs right up there with, I guess you could say the Dungeons and Dragons set and the uh, Lord of the Rings sets. You know, the kind of newer ones now that are big display pieces where you're just buying it, it's sitting there by itself. You're not doing anything with it. You're not making scenes. You're not posing anything. You're not really doing much with it because you can't expand on it. Uh, if it's something that they plan on building up a lot more of and making more sets of, then I think that this was not the best way to go. But I also will say, at least if they are going to build more on it, you have room for them to expand on later on. So maybe we might see 
more affordable sets down the line. Um, it is kind of sad though that uh, the Deku tree is so expensive because it's such a hallmark aspect of the Zelda series that if they did make smaller sets that were like, you know, 30, 20, 30, 40 dollars, and then now all of a sudden, um, you know, you have to like I wanna I wanna get the great deco tree and and put it into my set. I've got to spin an arm and a leg, as opposed to it being I it's great that it's very nicely detailed, but I think you could have probably even got away with I don't know, maybe having a little less on it if they ended up making a series. Now, if this is just a one-off, then then great. I they they probably did it perfectly. But if it was, if you're gonna make a big a series of sets, you know, you don't want everything big in big sets to cost too expensive. You know what I mean? Because I think at that point you're really just kind of losing it um to a to a degree. For example, imagine a castle set comes out now, Hyrule Castle, and that one's probably four hundred dollars. You know, um, it starts getting to the point where if you start piecing these things together, it gets very expensive. Whereas right now there's a current Lego castle set that's out, um, one of their creator three and one sets, and that goes for a hundred dollars. Is it a great huge set castle? No, it's not, but it gives you in a sense of that not everything has to be on the largest scale because then it makes it unaffordable. Even though there's some really great nice sets, I mean, who really can afford some of these really expensive sets and expect to actually make a collection? So that's my thoughts on this, you guys. As always, like, share, comment, subscribe. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.